So in this short video, I'd like to just go over some of the factors that affect blood flow. Now, there are four main factors that I see as being important. One is pressure. One is the viscosity of blood. There's the length of the tube and there's also the diameter of the tube. Now, if pressure, viscosity, the length of the tube and the diameter of the tube were to increase, what would that do to flow? Well, if pressure increases in the system, then we'd expect flow to increase. If the viscosity of the blood increases, then we might expect flow to decrease. If the length of the tube increases, then we might expect flow to decrease. What about diameter? If diameter increases, would flow increase or would flow decrease? Well, if you widen the tube, flow would increase. But this is quite important. Diameter is quite important. And I want to just show you with this little diagram down here. So imagine we have a setup where we have fluid running down this pipe that branches. This side arm here has length x, this side arm has length 2x. How long does it take this pot to fill? And how much longer would it take this pot to fill? Well, if the length here is twice as long, then it will take twice as long for this pot to fill. What if we keep the length the same, but we half the diameter? Well, in that case, actually, this takes 16 times as long to fill. And that is because flow is proportional to the radius raised to the power 4. What that basically means is that a very small decrease in diameter increases resistance considerably. And that, of course, decreases flow. OK, back here. So if, if diameter increases, then flow will increase. If diameter decreases, even by a little bit, then flow will decrease. OK, so coming over here to this diagram, what we've got is an artery with blood, a vein with blood, and the connection between the artery and the vein is in the capillary bed here. So this is our capillaries here. Now, what drives pressure? Well, obviously, it's a pressure gradient because pressure is higher in the arterial side than it is in the venous side. So let's call this point here pressure 1, and this point here we'll call pressure 2. Now it's the difference in pressure between the arterial side and the venous side that drives flow. So we can say, therefore, that flow is proportional to P1 minus P2. Times a constant, k. Now in this equation, k is equal to, to, to diameter. Now we need to think, what does diameter do to flow? Well, if we decrease the diameter, then we increase the resistance. So there must be a relationship between resistance and diameter. 
So let's call resistance R. And what we know is that R, the resistance, is equal to 1 over K, 1 over the diameter. Right, so as diameter goes up, resistance goes up. So as diameter goes down, resistance goes up. As diameter increases, then resistance goes down. So a wider vessel has less resistance. Now we can pull resistance into this uh, equation over here. And we can write it as flow is equal to P1 minus P2, the difference in pressure, all over resistance. And that is Darcy's law of flow. Now, can we expand on this any? Well, we already saw from this diagram here that flow is proportional to the radius raised to the power 4. Now, we can build this into an equation, a bigger equation, by looking at the relationship between radius, viscosity and length with respect to resistance. So let's expand what resistance is. Resistance is equal to 8 times viscosity times the length all over pi r to the power 4, raised to the power 4. So this is telling us that resistance is determined by viscosity, by length, and by the radius. So if viscosity, remember the way the equations work, what's on the top and what's on the bottom, if what's on the top goes up, then what's on the left side of the equation goes up. So if length goes up, resistance goes up. If viscosity goes up, resistance goes up. If radius down here goes up, then resistance goes down. Now we can build a bigger equation from this. What we can say is that flow is equal to P1 minus P2, as we've established. But now we can reverse these. And we can take our pi r to the power 4, put it on the top, which means this one goes down here. So now we're saying that flow is equal to the difference in pressure times the radius raised to the power 4 all over 8 times the viscosity times the length. Let's remember what we know about equations. If something on the top of the equation goes up, then what's on the left-hand side goes up. So if the difference in pressure increases, then flow would increase. If the radius increases, then flow increases. If viscosity and length increase, then flow will decrease. This equation for flow is referred to as Poisson's law. P-O-I S E U I L L E S, I think. Poisson's law of flow. So it would be useful if you could remember Darcy's law and Poisson's law, but I think what's absolutely crucial that you remember 
is this little simple bit here. Pressure, viscosity, length and diameter. What happens when each of these increases and what influence does that have on flow? Okay, hopefully that was useful.